to the Conduit Club in London. I'm here catching up with my colleague Stephen Revel. We're talking about the partner journey in 10 steps. Here we are at number six. And Stephen, what is the perfect remuneration approach for a partnership? Well, I'm going to use your favourite term. It depends. It has to fit the firm. And therefore, to say there is a perfect system that every firm could adopt, uh, I think, is 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 a false hunt. It's the holy grail that we're looking for, and it doesn't exist. Uh, so I think it's really important you have a remuneration system that fits your firm, your culture, and the environment you're operating in. So we're talking about what the KPI, the, the right KPI is, and how can partners, partnerships even think about having a conversation about the right KPIs when we all have such huge cognitive bias? If I'm the big biller, it's all about finance. If I'm the one investing in our people, I'll say that's our number one KPI. How to have a grown-up conversation about what contribution is without poisoning the water over what is right or wrong for the firm? Well, I think this starts for me in being clear what our expectations are of partners in our firm, yeah. in the firm. Uh, and uh, I think it's better to write that down. What is the role of partner in our firm? And using that, in a sense, as a benchmark. Uh, and it, it's importantly about revenue generation. That's not you know, mince words. But it's about getting the other jobs done that need doing, particularly around clients and people, and maybe even more so around clients, because ultimately revenue comes from clients. If we don't have the client relationship, we don't get the revenue. So it isn't just about billable hours. Billable hours are probably one of the biggest fictions within the legal profession. Billable hours is no more than how I choose to measure my time. Yeah. Not anybody else, not objectively, yeah. not the client. It's what I put down on a timesheet in the old days, what I now put into my computer. So it's a very odd number to base everything upon. You know, revenue may be less odd, but ultimately it's profit that matters. How profitable am I as a partner? Not how many hours do I do. No, it's, it, it's bizarre, isn't it? And then you and I end up in these conversations with these very sophisticated law firms saying, can you come in and tell us if we have the right approach to rewarding our partners? And then we have to be bold enough to say, well, tell me about what you're trying to achieve. You know, what does success mean, not only at the firm level, to your partners? And hence, what are the behaviors that are going to support that? What are the current behaviors you want to reinforce? But what are the behaviors you need to change in order to achieve that success? Because only once we understand what success is, the behaviours that will support that or not. We talk about culture, but it's probably behaviours more than culture. And then how to reward that. So it could be, unless we're clear about what success is, we can't have a conversation about what our perfect KPI is. I, I agree with you. And I think the problem is when we come to defining success, again, we're in danger of going straight to the number. Yeah. Success is, you know, two million, you know, a year for every mm -hmm. partner. And, and that becomes my, my fixation. But success, I would argue, for a law firm is much more than appropriately rewarding our yeah. partners. It, it's almost a hygiene factor. Yeah. Yes, of course we've got to yeah. aim to be as profitable as we need to be to reward our partners by reference to the market we're in. Without that, why would partners be partners in our law yeah. firm. To me, that's basic hygiene. What we then need to define as part of success is where do we want to be as a law firm? Where do we want to go as a law firm? What do we want to be known as amongst the people that join us amongst our client? And then as our last research showed, then we've, we've seen that the, the sharp edges and both of those approaches um, are disappearing and everyone's sort of coming into the middle with a clear understanding of the financial KPIs non-financial KPIs, some kind of guardrails and some kind of bands or lockstep by which people get to be uh, promoted as long as they comply with some kind of criteria. I think we're very definitely moving, in a sense, to some middle ground. Yeah. And that middle ground, I think, is increasingly focused on uh, an assessment of the contribution by a partner. And I think bringing us to that 
that word contribution, I think, is a really important way of looking at remuneration. Uh, and I would always maintain, and still do, that a lockstep system is much more brutal than eat what you kill. Because in a lockstep system, you all need to contribute to the same level. Yeah. And if you don't, the only lever a lockstep firm mm. has is to ask you to leave. Yeah, and that is what we're seeing that's misfiring in those lockstep firms that we advise, where... where Either they don't have clarity about what contribution is, or they have a clarity, but they're not enforcing that. And that is the word. They're not having the difficult discussions. And the question for the partners is, are we willing to be led? Are we willing to empower our leadership to have those difficult discussions? The current challenge in many firms is, is no, we're not. So I don't know what's worse, not having an understanding of what the contribution is or agreeing what the contribution is, but then not actually doing anything about it and having a consequence. Uh, I think they're both equally bad and get to the same result, which is you're potentially uh, misrewarding partners, i.e. over-rewarding and under-rewarding. Uh, and you're also not facing up to difficult decisions. I mean, and again, <clears throat> you could see a eat-what-you-kill firm as soft. Um, and why do I make that radical yeah. statement? Because if you're not billing very much because you're not very good, yeah. you just earn less. Yeah. And, and some say, I don't care if you earn less because I'm not taking your money out. So I'm happy to have you in the room next to me not doing very well because it doesn't affect my numbers at all okay, or what I do. But you and... should be worried yeah. because I'm sitting next door damaging the brand. Yeah. I'm not contributing to the firm as a whole by developing its brand and its reputation. I'm not attracting talent because I'm mediocre and I shouldn't be your partner. Yeah, and under under the e where you kill, what is my motivation to come and help you and work with you to develop the client the client relationships? I have none, do I? None at all. And you have no feeling of well, I should help the guy next door. Yeah, it's you know it's sink or swim. But I was surprised in our last research, the perfect partner, that we assume there's more collaboration in a lockstep firm. And f surprise, surprise, some of the e what you kill firms do much better on the collaboration because they have a metric for collaboration. In some firms, the metrics define the behaviours, where in the lockstep firms, people are still very worried about the numbers because they don't want to get a tap on the shoulder, as you say, because it's brutal. And the next step we're seeing in terms of the lockstep um, 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 development is turning off some of the financial reporting about the numbers to allow us as partners and lockstep to feel more comfortable about what we're doing and not looking at our own numbers first before we think about collaborating more with our colleagues. Well, um, you and I both know firms where they've switched off financial reporting because they don't want what they see to be dysfunctional behaviour yeah. driven by an undue focus on the numbers. Uh, they're trying to focus on collaboration yeah. and, dare I say it, they're trying to focus on the client. How can we best serve the client? Because simplistically, you could say we stand greater ch chance of success as a law firm by having lots of happy clients because we are collaborating to serve them better. So if that becomes our focus, not our numbers, yeah. then the numbers should speak for themselves. Yeah, and, and, and then take, take that a step, step further. Why do we need a strategy when our remuneration and our KPIs is rewarding? It's our definition of our strategy. So why are we wasting our time thinking about where we want to take our firm when it's how you're financially rewarding people is our definition of the behaviours that we're supporting in our firm? I'd argue that that's a very shallow basis for a strategy, just saying how can we encourage our partners to make as much money as possible because often that's very short term. Yeah. Often it won't be in the interest of the firm as a whole mm -hmm. uh, and therefore it really isn't a strategy. Yeah. I think firms do need to focus on strategy and make sure they've got the partner buy-in to that strategy yeah. and, and that they're driving the firm because of maybe the remuneration system, but yeah. in that same direction. And I'm only being controversial, but how many firms do we know that have a strategy that says we're going to head in one direction and a, a performance reward system that is heading in a rather contradictory direction? I, I agree, which is why many firms, I think it's time to look at your remuneration system. Is it fit for purpose? Is it fit for your strategy? And I think equally important, is it fit for the future? Okay. Uh, and that needs to be looked at you know, at least every five years. So 
remuneration is simple, isn't it? We just need the perfect KPIs. What is the perfect KPI? And then we'll all follow the KPI. But just beware it is the right KPI and not the wrong KPI, or we're, or we're running over the cliff. Well, I think by using KPI singular, you're in danger of falling into the trap that we only look at the numbers. Yeah. And, and I think where this middle ground between eat what you kill and, and lockstep and where firms are, are focused, not least because they see the value of collaboration, yeah. is finding this blend, this balanced scorecard, as, as we refer to it, between financial performance and all the other contributions partners uh, need to make. But the, the point earlier, I think, is the most important. You, you need to have a clear system you need to communicate that system so partners understand the expectations of the firm. And then you need to enforce it. And you need to enforce it in a positive way. And therefore, I wouldn't use the word uh, enforce. You need to support partners to meet the expectations the firm has of them. Yes. And if they start to fall short of that, you need to work out, again, how the firm can help them mm. fill the gap. There may come a point where they can't fill the gap, yeah. and then a difficult conversation has to be had. But the first part of that journey needs to be, how can the firm help? I agree. Can't we call this partner development and not partner remuneration? And can we not get every partner to think about what they want to achieve looking forward and the support they want from the firm to achieve that with a check-in with the leadership every quarter, every six months, although most managing partners will push back on that, to see how they're achieving that. So when we talk about cutting up the money and dividing it, we're starting in the wrong place. This is really about partner development. What is it that we expect from each other as partners and how are we deciding and evaluating? I agree. I think remuneration should be the consequence yeah. of how we assess a partner's contribution and ultimately what that contribution is. Yeah. The assessment needs to be super clear, super fair, mm -hmm. and we've talked previously about the trust in the system. Yes. I think there has to be that trust in the system. But once you've got that trust, I think the focus should be on, as you say, ensuring that all our partners are contributing to their maximum, that they're meeting expectations at their level, or in their practice group, or whatever it might be. And as a consequence, this is your remuneration, by reference to some pretty clear rules as to how the pie is divided. But in terms of rules, I mean, we know the firms that are going KPI crazy. Um, let's blame the consultants that are advising them, typically the big four. When we ask people what to expect of partners, they say, that's simple. We'll, we'll send you the 20-page spreadsheet with the KPIs and the, and the scoring system uh, to go with it. And then when you and I interview partners and say, What's, what is valued in this firm? How do you think you're evaluated? They say, well, we haven't read the document or we can't remember the document. We had some consultants that gave us help on that. It's all about the numbers. And in fact, when it's all about the numbers, it might even be the wrong number. It might be billable hours and not, not other KPIs. I think that, again, comes down to the culture of the firm, it comes down to leadership, and it comes down to better communication. As you say, many firms with apparently relatively sophisticated systems around appraisal and remuneration, none of the partners have ever read it. Yeah. And therefore, by definition, it's not working. Yeah. Uh, and the default is always, well, my numbers are good. Uh, and I think the firm leadership has to be really clear about numbers being important, but not the whole story, they're part of the story. Yeah. Uh, and I think managing partners and other leaders in firms n need to get to grips with that relatively fundamental issue and lead the partners down that same path. So let, let's follow that journey. Um, I, 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 I'm the people partner. Uh, don't come to me for good numbers, clients, I try and avoid, but I spend lots of time mentoring and generating, um, um, mentoring and developing our young people. Do I, do I get rewarded from that in this firm or do I have to do all the other stuff as well? I think virtually any partner in any firm has got to deliver some numbers in terms of hard financials. They've got to be working on matters for clients generating revenue. Uh, and I think uh, other than in the very largest of firms, that is uh, the case. Uh, not all partners can be in management. Uh, 
It's just not, not, not a practical way forward, especially for the smaller firms. And, and as a result of that, I think we do need to look at the numbers in most firms for most partners. But we need to then say, yes, but uh, their, their revenue number is 50% of person X who does nothing but client work. Why is that? And then you look at the other contributions. So it is important that we have a people partner. I'm pleased you, you are the people partner, Murray. But A, you've got to uh, not lose sight of the day job, I would argue. I still want to see some, some billable hours from you. Uh, but I also want to understand what you're doing as people partner. You can't just come and tell me you're a people partner, you're nice to our people. Oh, here's the big box, Murray. I I've got to see a real genuine contribution. Not that you're doing nice things to our associates, but that you're developing programs to get other partners to do nice things. Mm -hmm. You're helping with interviews. You're helping with exit interviews. You're playing a real role that is more than just the head of HR. I don't want you to be head of HR, Murray. We can hire somebody to do that. I want you to be the culture carrier for people in our firm, and that I will reward. Yeah. So we're talking about making the pie bigger, mm -hmm. and we're talking about sharing the pie. In terms of what, for, what, what's your advice to firms that want to review this sharing the pie and how they do it better? What are the two or three things they need to start doing? I think uh, in, in reviewing the system, uh, I think certainly a firm of, of maybe beyond 20 partners has got to have some leadership on this issue. You, you can't just do a poll, you know, amongst 20 people saying, how would you like us to pay you? Because they might come back with different opinions. You'll have 20 you might different, end up being well, it. you'll have 40 different answers, <laughs> I think, <laughs> not, not just 20. Yes. So I think the leaders of the firm need to step back and look at the firm they are and they want to be yeah. and to develop a remuneration system that we think is fit for purpose. Yeah. Uh, and then they need to engage with their partners, you know, and, and get their reactions, because often that will involve change. I think in some firms that change may be a, a several step change rather than a dramatic big bang change. You know. Do you think, you think partners are going to tell them honestly what they think about the current system or not? Because there's, there's, there's issue of winners and losers, aren't mm -hmm. there? So the current people winning from the current system, and we do the financial analysis around that, yep. um, to what extent are they going to want to change? And the perceived losers will be thinking about gaining the change that helps them. And I think it takes us to what is the process and what is the governance around that process. Because I think unless you have the, unless the partners feel they have their thumbprints on the front of the document, they're not going to want to buy into the results. So even if you have some clarity emerging about what's the workable options for leadership, you have to work to socialize that, to allow the partners to feel they've been listened to, and to, to agree to something that is workable for them. Because if not, it is like throwing a hand grenade into the law firm. One of the guiding principles would be that we're not going to reduce partner remuneration. So no one will come out of this in a worse situation. And whatever we decide good to be, we're going to bridge into that because we know that this really affects people's pockets and, and their, their own money and, and how they pay for their children's education. So this goes to the core and the emotions of the partnership, doesn't it? It does.